Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing absolutely well. Guys, in today's video, we are going to cover LTI Mind Tree Computer Programming Actual Ask Questions. And guys, these are the questions which has previously came in the actual examination or the assessment. So guys, I would highly recommend you to prepare well from these questions and practices. If you are not aware of any of the concepts in any of the question, please go ahead and read it from the internet and then prepare well. Okay, because these are the actual questions and the similar kind of questions. And there is very high chances also that some of the questions can even repeat in your assessment. So it is very important for you to prepare from these questions. And by the end of this video, I have a DIY question for all of you. So make sure to attempt it and answer it in the comment section. And guys, if you are not aware, I am creating a complete playlist on LTI prep. Make sure to check this playlist and uh, prepare well, okay? Because I am going to upload more videos in this playlist, okay? So let's get started with the first question. Let's look at this question. The question is a data type is stored as a six bit in signed integer, which of the given options cannot be represented by this data type. And we have the given options as minus 12, 0, 32 and 18. So guys, uh, let's understand first of all, what can be the answer and what cannot be. So a six bit signed integer can only represent the numbers from minus 32 to positive 31. Okay. So if you are using a six bit signed integer, then you can only represent the numbers in this range. Okay. And we have the given options and it is asked to us that which of the given options cannot be represented by this data type. See minus 12 is coming in this range. So this is correct. Okay. So this cannot be the answer. Zero is also coming in this range. If you see 32 positive 32 is not a part of this range. So this will be the correct answer for this question because this cannot be represented by this data type. Okay. And then 18 is coming in the range. So yeah, that is also fine. So the correct answer for this question will be option number C. Okay. So the only thing that you have to remember is six bit sign integer. The range for it is minus 32 to 31. And if you remember that there can be any questions which can be formatted, uh, like which can be created on this. So you can correctly give the answer for that. Moving on to the next question. So guys, this is the question that we have. Okay. Let's read it first of all, and then we will be attempting it. See the question is a database of motor vehicles has the base entity vehicles that is classified into two sub entities two wheeler and four wheeler these are four broken down these are further broken down into more entities what is this process called and we have the options as generalization aggregation specialization and segregation right so guys let's understand what is specialization first of all okay specialization is the process of starting with a higher level that is broad entity and then dividing into lower level okay which is more specific ones so we have this example right uh, that is a vehicle okay vehicle then to two vehicle right two wheeler then four wheeler two further broken it can further be broken into like uh, bike scooter car truck etc okay so that is what I am trying to say here that the correct answer for this one will be specialization since the base entity vehicle is broken down into sub entities. So this is specialization. Okay. The correct answer will be specialization option number C. This is a question from a uh, database. I would say so you need to know these concepts. Okay. In order to know it in further. Let's move on to the next question. So guys before we tackle up this question if you are new to the channel consider subscribing and if you are finding this video helpful please do give it a like because it motivates me a lot to bring more such helpful content for all of you okay let's read this question and then we will be attempting it the question says okay first of all the question is from operating systems the question says the head of a moving hard disk with 100 tracks numbered from 0 to 99 is serving a request at track 50 the queue of the request kept in the first come first serve okay so fcfs you might have heard about it order is 10 60 70 40 and 80 what will be the total head movement for this request okay so guys under first come first serve or fcfs we serve the request in the given order starting from track 50 and we have to calculate the absolute movement between successive positions so how it will happen see from 50 to 10 the movement is how much movement is 50 minus 10 which is 40 okay and we take the mod okay because we are just concerned with the like movement okay the unit so uh, next is uh, we have 10 to 60 the movement is 10 minus 60 which will be uh, 50 right in the same way we will have uh, from 60 to 70 okay and then 60 to 70 will be like 60 minus 70 so it will be 10 again 
then 70 to 40 okay so it will be 70 minus 40 which will be 30 next is 40 to 80 okay so 40 to 80 so this will be 40 minus 80 and like mod is we will take it continuously it will be 40 now guys just in case if you're confused i was taking these sequences with starting with 50 then we are taking this like these digits okay 10 60 70 40 80 in this way we have got the uh, like movements and now we have to add them because it is asked to us what will be the total head movement for these requests so in order to calculate the total head what we will do 40 plus 50 plus 10 plus 30 plus 40 okay so when we will do this and when you will do also sum of all these values the final sum that you will get will be 170 which is our option c so the correct answer for the question is option number c moving on to the next question now let's look at this question what is bellady's anomaly the options are for some page replacement algorithms page faults may increase as the number of allocated frames increases so second option is for some page replacement algorithms, page faults may decrease as the number of allocated frames increases. For some page uh, al replacement algorithms, page faults may decrease as the number of allocated frames decreases. And the final option is for some page replacement algorithms, page faults do not depend on the number of frames. Okay. So guys, let me tell you first of all, what is the correct answer? And then I will be explaining you. See, the correct answer for this question will be option A. And why is this the correct answer? See, normally we expect that increasing the number of frames should reduce the number of page faults since more pages can be stored in the memory. However, Bellady's anomaly is a counterintuitive situation which is observed in first in like FIFO page replacement. Okay. Where increasing the number of fra page frames can lead to much more page faults instead of fewer. And this anomaly does not occur in algorithms like optimal or LRU. Okay, and it can occur only in FIFO. So the phenom phenomenon where adding more memory causes worse performance is called Bellady's anomaly okay so guys uh, I don't expect you like if you don't know what is Bellady's anomaly principle and you know know about FIFO and all these algorithms then you cannot attempt this question so I would recommend you if you are not aware just give it some time okay in 10 minutes you can read study about this topic and then it will be very clear to you okay moving on to the next question the question is which routing protocol is used to distribute routing information between different organization and their customers? We have the option as interior gateway routing protocol. Second is intermediate system to intermediate system ISIS, border gateway protocol BGP and open shortest path first uh, OSPF as the given options. We have to find out what will be the correct option. So guys, the correct option will be border gateway protocol, okay, which is BGP option. C is the correct answer for this question. See, BGP or Border Gateway Protocol is an exterior gateway protocol designed to exchange routing information between different organizations. Okay, so that is why we have selected this as the option because this was the same thing that was asked to us in the question. Let's now move on to the next question. Let's look at this question. The question is refer to the given table, match the transmission technique in group A with its characteristic in group B. So guys, this kind of questions will also come where you will be given match the following kind of. Okay, so you will be having a table in group A, there will be few things and in group B, there will be few things you need to match them. Okay, so let's read the question first. Group A have unicasting, broadcasting and multicasting and in group B, basically uh, the definition of them are mentioned, you can say. You need to like match with the correct one. So the first one is message is sent from source node to a single destination node. Okay, second uh, uh, second data is message is sent to a subset of network nodes and option, uh, not option, but the third data is message is sent to all nodes in the network. We have to do the correct matching and then we have to select the correct options. Okay, so let's see. Unicasting is basically message is sent from a source node to a single destination node. Okay, so this is correct. So A will be mapped to 1. Next is broadcasting. So in broadcasting, what happens is broadcasting is one to all communication, okay, which means send to every node in the network. So the correct option match will be this one, okay, that is broadcasting message is sent to all nodes in the network. So we are left with only one, which is multicasting. So let's see, multicasting is message is sent to a subset of network nodes, okay. So in multicasting, what happens? One to many communication happens. So sent only to a selected group of no nodes, not all, okay. So, because all was broadcasting, so the correct uh, correct match will be this much. Okay. So, what is the match pattern that we have got? A is mapped to one, B is mapped to three, and C is mapped to two. Let's see if we have this option: A one, B three, and C two. I think option two is the correct one. So, the correct answer for this question will be option number two. Moving on to the next question now. So, guys, we have now the question based on a code snippet. Let's read the code snippet first, and let's try to find the answer for this question. 
the question is you are given the following code snippet okay and this is the code snippet few lines of code that is given to us let's read it quickly integer my var equals to 5 function main integer my var equals to 9 so the same integer is like declared twice and print my var and print and this is the missing code we need to find out what will come here okay so the task that we have to perform is fill in the missing code so that the program prints both the local and global variable values so see guys let's understand what will come before what will come in this code let's understand what the code is saying okay see there are two variables named as my van one okay uh, this one over here and then this one over here okay so one is a global variable and one is a local variable you have to understand that this is a global variable okay and this is a local variable local variable and global variable okay and just in case if you are not aware what is a local variable and global variable uh, like since this variable is coming inside the main function so its scope will stay within this block only okay between this parenthesis whereas this is on the top level which means its scope will be global to the entire program okay or the entire code okay so when you print my where one inside the main function it prints the local variable nine okay because as I said, its scope will be local to that block and uh, to print the global variable, which which is 5, okay, my where 1 equals to 5, we need to explicitly reference it, okay. And in most programming languages, this is done using scope resolution operator or similar and uh, this code is uh, like, you know, in C++, how we usually do it, uh, so this code is mostly related to C++. So in C++, we are going to write something like this in order to like access it. So print my where one okay so this is only what is going to come in this place okay so when we will do this we can access global variable also okay so this is the missing code that should go into line number seven okay print was already there so we don't have to write that only this part okay this much part that is the scope operator and then the my where one thing okay so i hope you have got it so let's now move on to the next question okay let's read this question now the question says refer to the given table match the term related to process management in group a with the characteristics in group b again we have a match the following type of question let's first of all read the data that we have in group a and b and then we will be doing the matching see first thing is group a has process program long term scheduler and message passing and group b has passive entity degree of multiprogramming active entity and interprocess communication see let's start matching so process will go with active entity okay Next, uh, uh, process will go with active entity because a process is a program in execution. Uh, hence, we call it as active, right? And next is a program. So, program will go with passive entity, okay? Program will go with passive entity. Why so? Because a program is stored on disk. Uh, because a program that is stored on disk is passive until it is executed, okay? Next is long-term scheduler. So, long-term scheduler will uh, map with degree of multi-programming. See, basically it decides how many processes will be admitted in the system. Next will be your message passing that will be mapped to inter-process communication. It will be used by processes to communicate with each other. Okay. So the final mapping that we have got for this question is A3, B1, C2 and then uh, D4. Right. So let's see if we have this option 1, 2. Okay. This option 2 is the correct one. Okay. So the correct answer for this question will be option number to. Guys, if you have any doubts in any of the question, please feel free to ask me in the comment section. Moving on to the next question now. Again, we have a question based on the code snippet. Let's understand this one now. See, the question says, consider the following pseudo code. The pseudo code is given over here, which is function main and automatic variable where, print where. What will be the output generated when the given code is executed? And we have the options as 0, 1, garbage value. And the final option is this code will generate a compile time error. So guys, the correct answer for this question, let me tell you the correct answer first and then I will be explaining what, why it is the correct. So the correct answer for this one will be option number C, which is your garbage value. Okay. So this code, uh, when we will do the output, it will give us garbage value because automatic denotes a local or automatic variable. Automatic or local variables are not initialized by default. So when you print where it, you, it like gives you an garbage value. Okay. And there is no compile time error. The program runs and prints the garbage or undefined value. Okay. So I hope you have now understood why it is giving the garbage value as the output. Let's now move forward and let's see this. So guys, so far we have discussed a lot of questions and now I have one question for you. So this is a DIY question, DIY as in do it yourself. 
uh, this is a homework question basically for all of you i will not be telling you the answer of this question you need to attempt this question if you are watching this video so far till here and write down this answer uh, of this question in the comment section i will be checking your answer and i will be replying to your comment every comment whether your answer is correct or not let's see the question a database has entities student and course a relationship is created to show that the student can enroll in multiple courses and a course can have multiple students what is the relationship called we have the options as one to one one to many many to many and aggregation so guys make sure that you attempt this question and definitely like you know reply uh, the answer in the comment section so guys that's all for today's video i hope you found it helpful and if you do please give it a like if you have any more doubts please drop them in the comment section you can also join me on telegram and follow me on instagram as well you can ask your queries over instagram dm2 make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss on any of the important updates on notification whenever i upload a new video that's all for this video thanks for watching the video